there are 9,000 benches, wooden benches, I believe, in Central Park, New York City. You say, well, that's a boring fact. Why are you telling me that? I'm not going to go to New York City. I'm probably not going to go to Central Park, and I'm not going to sit in any one of those 9,000 benches. And, you know, Hitler said something to himself along those lines. He said, you know, I've killed 100 million people. I've killed 6 million Jews. And the Bible says there's only two uh, destinations, ultimately, after death. One is heaven and one is hell. But uh, I believe that that language in the Bible is all symbolic. And uh, there's not going to be an eternal fire. All I need is my pistol, maybe a cyanide pill, maybe suicide, and there will only be oblivion after that. No conscious torment in what the, the Yiddish word calls uh, Gehenim, G-E-H-E-N-E-M, Gimel, Yod, Hey. Noon, Vav, Final Mem. So I'm just going to take my new wife, Ava Braun. I'm going to take my cyanide pills, cyanide uh, capsules, uh, uh, which have already been tested on my dog. And uh, we're going to retire. And that'll be the end of us. Well, if you want to uh, believe what he believed, you can. But I want you to know there was a real garbage dump, the valley just south of Jerusalem. And the Canaanites worshipped Baal and the fire god Molech. And they did it by sacrificing their children. Uh, it was like a, a gigantic abortion clinic. And uh, they they did this, and the fire burned continually. And even Ahaz and uh, Manasseh, the kings of Judah, were guilty of this terrible thing, this sin. Second Chronicles twenty-eight three, also Second Chronicles thirty-three six. And the, the prophet Jeremiah speaks about the valley of slaughter, which is uh, the destruction that's going to come on Jerusalem. And uh, that uh, we read about in Jeremiah 7, 31 to 34, Jeremiah 19, 2 and 19, 6. Uh, now, we know King Josiah put an end to this uh terrible uh, pagan worship that was going on in the valley of, of Gehenna. Uh, he defiled the valley. Why did he do that? In order to make it unfit even for pagan worship. 2 Kings 23 verse 10. And this garbage dump with the dead bodies of the animals, the dead bodies of the executed criminals, the fires burning constantly, the maggots working in the filth, the wind blowing from the direction of this garbage dump toward the city, the, aw the awfulness of the odor, the wild dogs howling and gnashing their teeth as they fought over the garbage. This is the awful scene. You say, yeah, but it's just a a symbol of Gehenna. It's not uh, it's not anything that we should worry about because it's just symbolic language. It's a kind of a metaphor. Well, the reality is greater than the symbol. Heaven will be greater than anything you can describe, and hell will be greater than anything that words might try to uh, depict. And the one who speaks about it the most 
is the one who went and died in our place to de- to deliver us from it. My God, why hast thou forsaken me? And that that's that's what he was saying basically. I'm in the garbage dump and I'm forsaken. Uh, I'm thrown out here in this uh, valley, you might say, of executed criminals. And uh, this is why I'm crying out this question. Why have you forsaken me? And the answer is, he was wounded for our transgressions. Believers are not good people. I am not a good person. I am a vile wretch saved by grace. The reason I got saved is it finally occurred to me that I deserve to go to this place. I had always feared it. That was the basis of my uh, my thanatophobia and my uh, my you know my worries about health matters uh, but when i was put under the focus of preaching in 1971 i knew that i was a vile wretch and this is what i deserved and i cried out as a vile wretch, not as a good person, but as a vile wretch to be saved from a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 19, 20, Revelation 20, verse 10, to Revelation 20, verses 14 to 15, Revelation 21, verse 8. It says the beast and his false prophet will be thrown into this fire, Revelation 19.20. That means that Hitler should have read this scripture before he, he did what he did. Because he, in effect, tripped the trapdoor to fall into the flames of Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Let God's word be true and every man a liar. At the end of the age, the devil himself will be thrown into the place that he was uh, that he was destined for. This place was not really built for human beings. It was built for the devil and his angels. It's not where we're supposed to go. We are intruders there. But if we want to do what Hitler did, which is agree with the devil, that he could somehow get away with it, that he could elude the justice of God, hath God said, the devil questioned, Hath God said, Hitler questioned, and it says he will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And not only that, but it says they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20, verse 10. So we are crying out to the Lord tonight that people all over the world will wake up, that God will have mercy on them like he did me in 1971 when all this happened, when this conviction came over me, this fear, this remorse. I felt bad about my life. I felt like I had ruined my life. I felt unclean and very much contrite, repentant, sorry, wanting to change directions, wanting to escape 
my old ways, my, my life, the way I was, me. I finally was able to see what a wretch I was. My mother had tried to raise me. It says, train up a child the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. But I went my own way. I was a prodigal. I went to the farthest place I could go. Then the Lord sent her after me. And then she finally got me to the house of God. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen the first day she arrived in Beverly Hills, but it did happen. She finally was able to get me there. And it was God who got me there. And then the tears began to flow. And this went on for weeks. And I'm praying, my friend, that you will feel bad about your life without you, without him. That it will get to you. That you will see what a wretch you are. And that you will always be a sinner saved by grace. But... The Lord wants to make you a new creature and through a process change you so that later on people will see that you are not what you were. Father, I want to pray right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for a change. A change in the hearts of the people hearing this word, that they will not go the way of Adolf Hitler, that they will not question God, that they will not say, look, we don't believe in that. We believe in universalism. We believe in annihilationism. We believe in anything and everything except what the scriptures say. So we'll take our chances. We'll roll the dice with Adolf Hitler. And let's see if he and we might show up in the same place. Don't take that chance, my friend. Don't gamble with your soul like that. This man was a stupid, perverted, and evil criminal. And after he saw Mussolini being strung up, he knew his own time was up. And sooner or later, your time will be up. And you've got to get right with God now while you can. Moshiach ben Dovid, thank you that you cried out, why hast thou forsaken me? That you, in effect, were the executed criminal whose body was in the valley of Gehenna. And you did this for us so that we might be saved from such a fate. Whoever believes in you will not see the second death in the lake of fire. That's what the scriptures say. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everybody said, Amen.